Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe and today I've got something really exciting. I'm going to be doing a review on the DJI Spark and I've actually just flown this in the three different flight modes. Just came back from the beach, I've shot some video, I've shot some photographs. Now I've already done an unboxing video which you've probably seen and I did a quick little fly around here. But let's talk about it a little bit more in depth. I've actually been to the beach today, I've flown it and I have a few more things to talk about it. But first of all, what is Spark and where does it kind of fit in the ecosystem of things? Okay, so the Spark is to date DJI's smallest drone. It's a very small little drone as you can see there. It flies in three different modes. The first mode is you can fly the drone by itself without any controllers or anything like that and you can actually control it with gestures. You put it in front of yourself like that and then you look at it and then it'll recognize your face and then when it does it'll start uh, flashing. You'll tap it twice, the on off control and then it'll change to a different color. Then put your palm of your hand up and it will actually uh, rise and sit four feet off the ground. Then at that point you put your hand out It'll recognize your hand and then you can control it and move it around with gestures. So with the gestures, I can move it up and down. I can go forwards, I can go backwards. What you gotta do though is make sure you go into the DJI Go 4 app and you enable advanced gesture control. When that's turned on, it's gonna work. And the other thing is uh, if you go like that, it will take a photograph. Um, and if you wave goodbye, it will actually fly off and take a shot of you as it's leaving kind of like a reveal shot and you can put both hands back up and it will return to home. So the second mode is you can control Spark with the mobile device. So your phone, for example, and then you'll see it on the Wi-Fi, connect to it, launch the Go4 app, and at that point, it gives you more options. Uh, you've got the different advanced flight modes that are available at that point. Um, also, you can use your phone, uh, just use your thumbs on the phone to control it, just like you would a controller. And it works not bad. I mean, uh, it's very difficult to get a smooth yaw, like um, to track an object manually. It's very difficult, but you can fly it and you've got some pretty decent control. Now the range is going to be limited both in altitude and distance when you do that. So it's controlling with the phone right now. So right now there's the maximum range. It doesn't go that far out and it doesn't go that high. So let's bring it back in now and we're going to try with the controller. All right, so there we go. It was a little easier to control than what I thought it would be. Um, it doesn't give you as much control as you have with a regular control, but it's not too bad. So the third option, and that is to use a remote. Now you get this remote either independently or you can buy it with a Fly More bundle. Now the remote costs $150 by itself or it's $200 for the Fly More, which I would definitely recommend getting the Fly More because of all the extra stuff you get. You get the controller, you get the bag, you get the battery charging hub, you get an extra battery, you get prop guards, uh, you get all the good stuff with that. So an extra set of propellers. So it's definitely worth getting the Fly More bundle, I, I think so, for the extra $200. Now when you use a remote, it looks very much like the Mavic remote, except it doesn't have an LCD screen on there. And also it doesn't have the C1 and the C2 buttons on the bottom. But apart from that, the form factor, size, the feel, the way it connects is the same, except with one exception. On the Mavic, as you know, you attach your phone, you plug it in and it uses OcuSync. In this case, it uses Wi-Fi. So what happens is there's two Wi-Fi generators. There's one inside here and one inside here. If you're using it just the phone, it's picking up the Wi-Fi from your copter. If you want to use it with the controller to change it uh, from working on the phone only to actually working on the remote, you have to tap this six times. And then you hear that beep. That means it's changed modes now. All right, now it's connected to the controller and let's uh, fly from the controller this time. So once you've got the controller on the Wi-Fi, 
then you can actually go into Go 4 app and it'll work like any other copter that you've used before or if this is your first one you'll see the FPV or your first person view will be on the screen and your range will be increased. You can do the full range with this now. The other thing I'm really noticing is it's a lot easier to get smooth video shots because you can pan with the controller. It's really hard to do that using the phone in order to get a smooth panning shot. It's really possible. Let's have a look at some of the settings in the app. First of all, we have a shallow focus, which will simulate depth of field from a very wide aperture, similar to portrait mode on the iPhone. And then of course, we can go into manual mode and we can adjust the shutter speed manually and also the ISO. And you'll notice the EV meter at the bottom shows the exposure value, or we can go into auto mode. And also we have, here's all the different shooting modes that we have. So here we have a panorama mode. So we can do horizontal or vertical panoramas where the gimbal will adjust and the copter will also adjust to create a nice grid-like panorama. Now I'd like to show you the originals of this, but unfortunately my spark got taken down by a seagull. <laughs> Check out that video um, at the end of this. But here's a, a low-res image from the app of what the pano looked like. All right, then there's other things that you might be used to. Um, here's our different types of shots that we can create. And of course, return to home also works using the GPS to bring us right back to the point where we started. And also sport mode is enabled. So if you turn that on, sport mode will give it increased speed and agility, which is kind of fun. And, uh, and sport mode actually worked really well. All right, let's try this thing in sport mode and see how it goes. things maneuverable and fast. Because you now have a drone that you can take off and land in the palm of your hand and you can control without a controller essentially um, and also you can fly it indoors which surprisingly it actually works really well indoors. In fact that's probably going to be my main use for it is going to be my indoor drone. Now these are important. These are propeller guards. This is a, a common feature on all DJI copters is we have diagonal props that spin clockwise and counterclockwise. So we've got one pair of white and we've got one pair of black. So if we look on our prop guards here, you'll notice that some of them come equipped with a little white marker and some of them don't. Two do and two don't, and that's because they work in pairs. We've got two whites and two blacks, they match the props. Now the cool thing about working with these prop guards is that we don't have to take the propellers off to put them on. They're very, very simple. We just put them in, twist, and lock. And I'll show you how that works. Let's start with the very first one. We'll start with a white one. All we do is we just put it here underneath the little circle like that. Twist, lock. Let me do a black one. They go the opposite direction. You, put, you just put it in there. Make sure that it's open. Put it in, twist, and lock. Wait for that little click. Okay, let's do that again. Make sure we get a black on black. Look at this. Just so simple. Twist and snaps into lock. 
And the last one is white on white. Let's pop it in, twist, and snap it, and just snap it shut, just like that. All right, so then the prop guards go on, very, very simple. All right, guys, I've got a little couple of tips for you here. Um, sorry about the lighting and everything. I just packed all the lighting up, and then I realized I want to add these tips for you. So the first one we're going to look at is how to charge your Spark. So you're out there with your Spark, and you want to charge it from a Mavic Pro battery. You can actually do that. All you need to do is get the power bank adapter. It's a power, it's this little adapter here that comes with the Flymore kit with the Mavic and you can buy it by yourself. It's a power bank adapter. So what it does is it just snaps on the bottom of the battery. So you just snap it on. So you just snap it onto the bottom of the battery like that and it gives you a USB and you can use a Mavic battery as a portable power. So all we're gonna do is just plug, take the USB that comes with the Spark, plug it into the back of the power bank, then we're going to go into the spark. You'll notice there's a little USB in here where, next to where the uh, card goes. We're just going to plug that in. Just plugs in there and check this out. Turn this battery on. And then once that's up, check this out. Oh, look at that. Check that out. So now the spark battery is actually charging from a Mavic battery. So you could probably charge, get a couple of charges maybe out of a Mavic battery. I'm not sure how much you could get, but if you're in a jam, you've got Mavic batteries, you don't have Spark batteries, do that. Or you can just use a portable power brick. But in this case, this works great. You can also use it for your controller. So if I want to go here, controller's going low, I can do the same thing. I can snap this open, plug in here. Look at that. And now I'm charging my remote controller for my Spark from a Mavic battery. So that's one tip there. And then the other one I've got actually came from my buddy uh, Aldrin Astacio. You'll see him at Flight Path. Check him out on YouTube there. So you can plug your phone in here. So you can just plug this into your Lightning, put your iPhone on here and connect through USB rather than Wi-Fi. That way it's more responsive and you get better range and everything happens a lot sharper and quicker. So anyway, there's a couple of quick little tips for you guys. Alright, so I just wanted to show you this. I'm actually quite proud of it. It's the latest Shutterbug magazine. And if you look on here, it says, Colin Smith's drone photography tips will take your imagery to new heights. So, there we go. There's tips uh, for flying in there. And uh, that's uh, some of the stuff there. And you can see, so that's some of my photos. So I'm real happy to be in there. You can actually check that out. I put it on my Instagram at Photoshop Cafe and also on my uh, Facebook at Photoshop Cafe. You can actually see a little bit more about the article. So super excited about that opportunity to share some of my photos. Um, also, if you want to see my photos on Instagram every day at Photoshop Cafe, I post a new drone image. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope you had fun with it. I'm going to get ready to do a Q&A because I'm getting a lot of questions and answers starting to accumulate about the drones and the iPads and the MacBook Pros and different things like that. So uh, look for a Q&A session coming really soon. And if you want to get your questions in there, go to Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook and ask a question there. And those are all at Photoshop Cafe. And who knows, maybe I'll answer your question. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick little video. Uh, if you want to see more of these kind of videos, as well as great tutorials on Photoshop and Lightroom, hit the subscribe button right now on YouTube. Become part of the Cafe crew. Just click that subscribe button, boom. And uh, also hit that little bell thing and that'll give you uh, a whatever, a notification so you don't miss any uploads. And anyway, hit that like button, guys. Um, you know, let's smash the like button. Let's pound that into dust. And also add a comment. Let's get a discussion going. And of course, that's where you can also ask a question for the upcoming Q&A. And also, I'll go in the comments and I will answer questions. So until next time, I'll see you at the cafe. I'll see you at the cafe without bumping.